Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, September 21st. Thank you for joining us today for our devotion time from St. John's Lutheran Church in Barry Mills, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Schultz, and we're glad that you're with us today as we begin the day by hearing from God's Word and being reminded of God's unchanging grace. Let's begin our time together as we go to the Lord in prayer with Martin Luther's morning prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. It didn't take very long. It didn't take very long for God's people to hit their first detour, to hit that block and stop in the way that God had called them to go. God had been so good. Everything that he created was perfect. He was a blessing constantly to Adam and Eve, blessing them in every way in his own image without sin, with perfect happiness, beautiful joy, a perfect marriage, a perfect world. God is good. But it didn't take long. It didn't take long for Adam and Eve before they fell for the lie that convinced them that life could be better without God. That life could be better if they could choose to do it their way, not God's way. It didn't take long for them to fall for that lie, and the moment they sinned, it stopped. But that's when we see it, the path of God's grace. You see, the path of God's grace began in the Garden of Eden. The path of God's grace, when the detour was taken by Adam and Eve, and they chose to go another route, it was God who reached out to them and brought them back. It was God who sought them out. It was God that called out to Adam and Eve and led them to see their sin. It was God who led them to confess their sin and their need for him. We see definitely an imperfect confession in that Adam blamed his wife, he blamed Eve for his sin, he even blamed God. Eve's confession was also not perfect. She tried to pass the blame over to the devil and didn't want to take full responsibility. But still, God sought them out. God reached out to them. God came to them in grace. And the grace stands out in one of the most powerful verses in the Bible that really begins the path of God's undeserved love in Genesis 2.24, where the Lord speaking in the hearing of Adam and Eve is talking to the devil, who was in the form of a serpent at that time, and talking to the devil, the Lord said to him in Genesis 2.24, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. He will crush your head to hopeless or seemingly hopeless Adam and Eve who were lost in sin, who had brought sin into the world, who were devastated. The Lord gave them certainty, hope that was resting on his grace, the promise of his grace, that one of Eve's descendants would come into the world and crush the devil's head. In the meantime, this descendant would have his heel struck by the serpent. That's the path of God's grace, isn't it? Jesus. This right here is the very first beautiful and powerful promise of the Savior and every other account in the Old Testament and prophecy in the Old Testament pointing to Christ Jesus is building on this certain promise. You see, God's grace is stronger than sin. 
Adam and Eve fell for the lie, thinking that if they sinned, they would be a little happier. Adam and Eve fell for the lie, thinking that if they sinned, it would make their life more complete. That somehow things would be better without God. That lie makes no sense. They couldn't have had it any better. And yet, that's the deception of sin, isn't it? We, like Adam and Eve, tend to think we could sometimes have it better without God. If we just do what we want to do for once, if we assert ourselves a little bit more, we fall for the lie that we don't fully and completely need our God. But God's grace is stronger and praise him for that. When Adam and Eve sinned, everything changed. They hid from God. They were afraid of God. They were crushed by guilt. They experienced shame. You and I are there, aren't we? We know the reality of sin in our own lives. We know the headaches, the difficulty and devastation it brings. Most of all, we know the crushing load that is just too heavy for you and me to carry because we can't carry it. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus did. That's the path of God's grace. The Lord Jesus took the burden of your guilt, the fear that's causing us to hide behind a bush trying to hide from God, the guilt of trying to cover up our sin. Jesus took all of that and unconditionally, in a perfect love, bore it on himself when he died on the cross. And when Jesus was on that cross, his heel was struck. His suffering was real. His death was real. The sin that he bore, carried by him, hurt. It was a real agony that our Lord Jesus suffered. His heel was struck, but he wasn't defeated. It was only a heel strike because three days later, he rose up triumphantly from the dead. Satan's head has been crushed. The path of God's grace, as we continue to review it, as we dig into God's word together, we will see Jesus even more closely. We will see God's love and we will see his interaction in the lives of his people. And it gets very personal, doesn't it? We see the interaction of our Savior in our lives. That that was for me, for you, that he died. That was for me, for you, that he rose up on Easter morning. That was for me, that was for you, that he crushed the devil's head. And you share in that triumph as a redeemed and forgiven child of God. That's the path of God's grace. Let's pray. Most gracious Lord God, we thank you for another beautiful day. We ask you to be with us and protect us. For those of us who are hurting in any way, come with your healing power. For those who are sick, come to take care of us with your comfort. For those of us who are struggling, be our strength and our rock. And most of all, Lord, above all else, be the bright shining light of salvation, our encouragement, and draw us closer to you in faith as you keep us in faith. Use us as lights in this sinful world to let the light of your grace shine that you clearly let shine through your words of scripture. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we thank you for joining us this morning for our devotion time, for our time in God's word. Just a couple real quick announcements. This evening at 7 o'clock, we are having Bible information class. Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening, we will not be having confirmation class for the youth but we are going to have Bible information class this evening. We pray that the Lord keep us all focused on our work, give us the joy of proclaiming him and the enthusiasm to hear his word and worship him. Let's close our time together now with the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.